And with everything finally finished, we can move over to the compositor. Um, and just before we do this, let's go to the render output settings and set up an output path. Forward slash forward slash at the beginning indicates that it's going to save into the same directory that the blend file uh, is located in. If you put forward slash forward slash, then you can create a new folder. I've created one called tutorial animation final and then forward slash or backslash and then the name of the file. So I've called the output file to be Disney tutorial. Change it from whatever it's on to FF uh, MPEG video because we don't want a JPEG sequence or anything like that. And then I'm going to change this to MPEG4 just so I can use it in DaVinci Resolve. All right, and now we can go to Compositor. So click on Plus, and then under General, click on Compositing. Click on Use Nodes if it's not already clicked. And then we need to add some nodes in. So Shift A, S, and we're going to add a composite node. This is what outputs it into the file. And then Shift A, S, Render Layers. And we'll plug this in there. And we also want to be able to view what we see in the compositor. So we'll do Shift A, S, and then we're going to add a viewer node. And then we'll connect this up to there. Hold down Shift, drag with your right mouse button down, and that will combine those wires. Let's just get rid of these at the bottom. We don't really want those. So get rid of that one. Get rid of that one. Collapse these onto each other. And then we can collapse this onto there. And then we're left with just the compositor. Just check the render setup. It needs to be set to something lower. So currently, by default, it's at 64. If you change that to 4, it'll render much faster. And then uh, everything else should be fine. I've got ambient occlusion turned on, although it doesn't really seem to make a great deal of difference. So I don't worry too much about that. And now we can go back to the compositor. Press F12 to render a single frame. That's fine. And then we can move this backdrop out of the way by holding the Alt key and using middle mouse to drag that up. We don't need this side panel, so I'll just press N to get rid of it. And I can bring the nodes out of the way of the final image. And what I'm going to do is add three nodes. So Shift A, S, RGB curves. And I want to add three of these. The first one is going to be for the black levels. And then Shift D to copy. This one's going to be for the mid levels. And then Shift D. And this one's going to be for some contrast. Let's just bring these out of the way. So first thing, bring the black level down. If you zoom in. You can drag this to the right, and you'll see the effect it's had there. It's made it much darker. And we can control this by dragging the factor to the left until it looks a bit, uh, a bit better, somewhere like that, perhaps. And the next thing, to bring some of that brightness back, we can bring the mid-range up. Not too much, maybe around about there. This is personal preference, so you just experiment. And now we're going to add some contrast. So I'm going to bring the top of this, add a new little dot. I can drag that up. That'll increase the brightness areas. Then put a new dot here and drag this down. And that will decrease the black areas a bit more and give us a bit of contrast. So if we drag this to the left now, you'll see we're getting a much stronger effect. So I might have it somewhere like that. And that's also bringing out the uh, saturation on the colors a bit as well. So just tweak that until you're happy. And then if I want to add a bit more brightness without messing up these, I can just add another RGB node. And put this in there. And then I can just drag this top part to the left a little bit. And that will increase the brightness to whatever I want. Somewhere about there probably. And now, just a few effects. I'm going to add a glare. Drop that in there. Change it from streaks into fog glow. And we can turn the threshold down to zero. The reason is, if I put this at 0 0.5, then we're going to get this really strange effect. And that's because the volume has got a really soft, gradual fall off. And we're telling this to only add the glare to certain bright parts, which will then create this. So instead of doing it that way, we'll turn this to zero, and then we can control the amount with the mix. 
So a negative number, negative one, for example, is we're not getting any glare. We're getting the original image. We change that to one positive number. We're getting just the glare. So if I now change this back to 0.5, you'll see we're only getting the actual areas that have been affected by this glare. Uh, and if you wanted to do it this way, you can, and then you can mix it back in with this one afterwards. But I'm just going to use this. So I'm going to set it to negative 0.8. And I'm going to turn the threshold back to zero. So it affects everything. I think I actually prefer it, 0.5. So I'm going to leave it on 0.5. And then finally, I'm going to add a, a lens distortion. So this will give us a nice sort of chromatic aberration, which basically means it will change the, it will separate the red, green, and blue towards the edges of the screen. And it will just offset them a little bit to give it a sort of a, a feel that you would get from a camera. So increase the dispersion. You don't want to be too uh, heavy with this. So, if, for example, if I put 0.1, then that's way too much. Although, you you know, if you like it, then you use it. But 0.01, I think, will be pretty good. Maybe 0.02. So it's quite subtle. Maybe go a bit more 0.05. Yeah, I think 0.05. I'm going to render the complete animation now, and then we'll, uh, we'll check that in a second. To render the complete animation, just press Control F12. What's happening is it's rendering one frame at a time, and then at the end of each frame, it's applying the compositor changes we've made and putting those into that outputted file. And here's the final result. I'm pretty happy with it. It's a little bit different to the one that I showed at the beginning of the video. So again, if you want to get both files, you can certainly download that from the website. I hope the video is useful for you. And if you would like to support the channel, I've also put a donation link in the description. And I'll see you next time.